just because you have a survey documentary does not mean that there does not need to be a clear beginning, middle, and end. You are creating your narrative not by the life of a person, not by the life of an issue or a movement. For a survey documentary, there still has to be, this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end. You still want to have an exciting incident. Hi, it's Spade from Storyteller Therapy. This is the podcast where I give the practical, emotional, and mental support for storytellers working in careers or working on careers in film and television. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Comment below your thoughts or questions about the content. This podcast is also available on Apple iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. All right, let's get started. I'm Spade Robinson, and this is Storyteller Therapy. Listen. I am so excited about today's podcast. Like, this is my favorite subject matter ever. Mind you, I may say that several times over the course of this podcast, but this is, I could go on and on and on and on and on about the subject matter. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. It's one of the most misunderstood things, I think, um, in cinema and movies. And I want to talk to you guys today about documentary genre, genre and documentary, especially for documentary filmmakers trying to figure out how they're going to approach their film and using what genre the film is to understand what's the most compelling approach for that genre. So I cannot wait, cannot wait to get into that. This episode is going to be the first in a series of podcasts about documentary. There's going to be a three-part series, today being the first one, for documentary filmmakers that will help you in your approach to making your documentary and hopefully get it to the point where it is the most compelling version of itself, it is the strongest version of itself, and the most competitive version of itself, which I think for a lot of documentary filmmakers really comes in handy because if you're an independent documentary filmmaker, you're talking about gathering resources around your film. And a lot of that has to do with applying to grants and different resources that help you to finish your project. So before we jump into all of that, I want to check in with you guys and see what you guys have been watching and reading. So for my check-in, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite documentary films ever in the entire history of the world. When people ask me what's my favorite documentary, it's hard because there are a lot of different types of documentary. It's just hard because there's so many different approaches. It's like asking what's my favorite film. Uh, my favorite horror film? Like I don't know how to really answer that question. But this, hands down, has the best documentary cinematography I've ever seen in my life. It's a film called Position Among the Stars. And Position Among the Stars is a trilogy of documentary films made by one filmmaker that followed one family over a very long period of time. The reason why I say it's the best cinematography I've seen, it's not because it's the most, it's not like a 4K film. It's not the most high def, super slick film you've seen that was shot on like super duper, 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 duper pro. I don't even know what the technology is that makes things look super bright and slick and glossy. This is not that movie. But what this is, is a filmmaker, first of all, who has incredible access to this family. Very intimate film, which I think is created by the fact that he worked with him and filmed them for so long. But also the ingenuity and the technique that goes into, that went into creating the look of this film and how cinematography is married to story, which is to say it's not slick for the sake of being slick, but the techniques he used are very story driven. It's just incredible. In terms of ingenuity, um, I'm always taken by and fascinated by how he apparently he like built his camera to do all these interesting things. It's just an exciting thing for me as a filmmaker to think about sort of the muscle and the mind that goes behind how you create an image. And I and he did this so well and he was so thoughtful. And well, it turned into an amazing trilogy. This film in particular, which is the last film in the trilogy, I believe, is just a great film. It's a great documentary and it's a beautiful, it's beautifully told and it's beautifully shot. So I think that you should watch that film for those reasons. I don't think that if you're not a documentary filmmaker, that there's not a lot of things that you can get from watching his technique and how he shot it. I think it's something to look at. 
All right, let's jump into our therapy session. So when it comes to genre in documentary, the reason why it's such a passion point for me, I think because it's something that we don't widely talk about when we talk about a post-documentary film. We generally jump right over that and go directly into the subject matter and what the film is about. I've never seen a document. Well, that's a lie. I have seen plenty of documentaries that, not, that are not about worthy subject matters, but they are far and few in between. 99.9999999% of all documentaries are about worthy, important, significant, and urgent subject matters. That has never been the problem with documentary. The reason why you're not getting a grant or you're not getting support for your film has nothing to do with the worthiness of your subject matter. It has everything to do with the approach to the film. So what I've realized, and this is sort of where the therapy part comes in, is that there's a lot of anxiousness when it comes to making a documentary. You find something, a human rights lawyer in the Congo who is LGBTQI and they just got stoned yesterday and you get on the first thing and fly there. Or for the people who don't have that kind of privilege, your great, 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 great grandmother has a wealth of stories about Black Wall Street when she lived through it and almost died. I guess that was not long ago, so it wouldn't be that many greats. But the point is, is that you have something worthy to say. You have a story that's worthy to tell. And there's this anxiousness to jump right in and figure it out later. And I cannot tell you. I think with a certain level of experience, you've been making docs for a while and you can sort of on the fly make really sound creative decisions. Do it. Go. If it's something where somebody's going to die yesterday, sure, go get on a plane or go down the street and get on the bus or whatever. But if you have at least a little bit of a space, I need you to consider a couple of things. And I want you to work really hard, do the sort of mental and emotional work to come against that anxiety that says, if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. I think if you don't do it now and you plan out, you will do it and it'll be done well. And if you do do it now and you don't have a plan and you don't have a strategy, then you're going to work really hard and perhaps you'll get really stuck. And then you'll never do it. Uh, I mean, I've had that experience with my own documentary, with as much as I know about documentary. And it's just not, just not a good look. It's not necessary. Some films have to take forever, but some films don't. And I don't think majority films do. So I'm asking you to do that sort of emotional, mental work first and let go of that anxiousness. I have to, I have to, I have to now, 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 now. Who can I get? What can I do? Who can I call? Oh, I know I can get this favor. Okay, let's just pause and... First, identify what type of film you're making. So as I said, when I was introducing the episode, a lot of people think documentary is its own genre, but it's not. Documentary is an approach or a technique to storytelling and filmmaking. And within documentary are all of these genres. I can't even go over all of them. I don't even have the time and space to go over all of them. First, before I get into the different types of documentaries, I want to be super clear. There are a lot of things that make a documentary compelling and engaging and high stakes and urgent. All of these great things that we want documentary films to be. One of the major things, the major ingredients that add to what is going to make your film a profound film film in the current landscape, if you're making it today, if your film adds something to the conversation that's already being had about that subject matter, there are different ways to add to the conversation. You're adding to the conversation artistically, meaning you're doing something interesting with the form of documentary filmmaking or storytelling. The way that you're telling the story or the texture of how the film looks. Why you? What personal handprint or fingerprint are you putting on the film that no one else would put on because you are your artist and you have your worldview and you have your creative bent? The next thing is thematically. What do you add into the conversation thematically that is different or a shift or a deeper dive into the conversation that's already been had being had in the zeitgeist around that subject matter. So for example, my film is about rape in the Congo and there's a ton of films from the vic- victim's perspective. Perhaps I will go to someone who's done rape in the Congo or perhaps I will look at the institutional factors 
Or perhaps I will look at this war that created a completely different dynamic between men and women. What thematically, what themes, what are you drawing out of it that isn't already currently in the zeitgeist? And then the next and last thing is factuality. I don't even know if that's a word. But the point is, what are you adding that's factual to the conversation? This is, I feel, very specific to documentary that isn't already being had. Which is, which is different than the theme because my perspective can bring out a theme that is very personal and I'm the perfect person to make this film because no one is thinking about this. When it comes to facts, we're talking about what is this nugget of truth that illuminates why tell this story right now? Let's go into the different types of documentaries. What is going to be important to make a compelling version of this type of documentary? hopefully you'll be able to identify your film in one of these categories. I'm going to start with a problem or issue doc because every documentary is not a problem or issue doc, but most documentaries are a problem or issue doc. Most of them that came across my desk, most of them that continue to come across my desk exist in this space. What is really important to understand about the problem or issue doc is a new way of understanding. So if I have a film about the economic crisis or something sort of more visceral, I think, would be hunger in America. What I would want to do is to make sure that what my film does is bring about a new understanding around the subject matter. So when it comes to hunger in America, what's already happening in the conversation around hunger? And hopefully what you've done is you've pared it down to be more and more specific because that's just going to make your film a better version of itself. So hunger in America is a bit broad, but you may do hunger in America within a certain community, hunger in America within a certain age group. So hunger in America for elderly Americans who live in cold climates or whatever. What I want when I watch your films to have a new understanding of this issue. Most people who are the audience members for documentaries already realize that Hunger is not a good thing. I want to have a more nuanced understanding of what it looks like. And that's why you're making this film to show me what it looks like. For that kind of movie, either your archival or your verite footage has to be designed in such a way that by the process of watching this film, I'm coming away with a deeper and more nuanced understanding of this thing. And you get to that by... A, doing a lot of research, but B, casting. Casting, 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 casting. Casting doesn't have to be like if you, my main character in the film. It can Casting can be a community. Casting can be a place in the world. Casting can be a specific time period. Like when do I need to shoot this? I, if it's going to be about elderly people in these cold climates, it behooves me to go there in the winter to really see it, right? So you want to make sure that the casting you decide to use is going to reveal something to us that may not be brand new but gives us a more complex understanding of this thing and then you can do whatever you want to with that more complex understanding it can be a question that you answer it can be something you leave open-ended the most important thing is that your film gives me something that will shift or change my previous knowledge going in my previous understanding going in the next is the verite documentary which is one of the most popular ways to make documentaries especially now because people see it as a very sophisticated way of filmmaking because it's so incredibly enjoyable to watch so many times. It's the way a lot of fiction film works where you watch people do things. Through the course of the story, things are revealed over time. People's humanity or flaws or triumphs or whatever is revealed over time. Because of that, people have really taken that on as a form of storytelling um, and it's a favorite. So because of that, it's something that you want to make sure that your story will be revealing something over time. Given that we're talking about adding to a conversation, How is this reveal going to be additive, I think, is such an important thing. What I challenge you to do for a Verite documentary is to look at why you're telling the story. What do you want me to know or understand or see? And then ask yourself, is Verite the best way for that to happen? And if it is... How am I making decisions about what I shoot and when I shoot to ensure that what I'm looking to be revealed is going to be revealed over the course of the film? How sure of that can I be? How much guesswork can I take out of it? Obviously, there's so little that you have control over, but I think we lean on that too much. And being well prepared and very choosy about what you shoot, I think, is so key in Verite documentary because there's a lot you can miss when you're not shooting constantly, but also overshooting is such a 
toxic thing for documentaries. Um, that I I want to be super clear that the most important thing for your verite documentary, and I know I'm being repetitive, but I really want you to get this, is that there is something specific that I'm looking for going in. And I know it when I see it and I'll know it when I hear it. And that this is the right approach. And it is the right approach because the thing that I want is going to be the most compelling when it is revealed over time. And that thing is something that will be additive to the conversation around the subject matter, around this person's life, around the wider context of what it is that I'm creating. The next type is the survey documentary. So survey documentary is sort of what people call a talking head documentary, which is when you have a number of experts and or people who are close to a subject matter speaking on a subject matter. I think there's several things that are really key with this approach. I think casting is super key. Because it's a survey documentary, your access is one of the most important things, which is to say your experts or the people you have speaking in your film have enough, you have access to people who have enough access to the subject matter to really know what they're talking about. The higher the level the access and the more information that they have that will again be additive to the conversation around the subject matter your film is key. You also want to make sure that you are building a clear narrative. I mean, just because you have a survey documentary does not mean that there does not need to be a clear beginning, middle, and end. You are creating your narrative not by the life of a person, not by the life of an issue or a movement or anything like that. You are creating your narrative based on the life of the story that you're telling, right? So for a survey documentary, there still has to be, this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end. You still want to have an exciting incident, why you're telling the story or why this is off or why this happened. And you still have your lowest point, something that shifts, something that changes. The higher level your access is to people who know what's happening, the higher the stakes, the more compelling those facts will be. But also you want to make sure that this new information is revealed in the same way that you would craft any other kind of story. So it feels a verite documentary and I was following someone who who is traveling from New Mexico to Mexico City on a journey to see their dying grandfather in Mexico City before he passes away and give him his degree that got mailed to your house, but that he worked really hard to get at the age of nine. Great. Can't wait to see it. That has a, such a clear journey, right? So you start in New Mexico, got my grandfather's thing in the mail. It meant so much to him. I'm going to visit all of these relatives. Or I'm going to go on this road trip to give to him on his deathbed. Okay, so there's a clear beginning, middle, and end. There's something that happens along the way that changes everything. You really reveal that the film is not about the grandfather, but about her and her legacy and what she was supposed to do in the United States, but she didn't do on her guilt. And that's why she feels like she has to go all the way back to Mexico. That's what the film is really about. Your survey documentary has to have that same narrative. It has to be just as compelling. And you build it with those same building blocks. I'll do a podcast specifically around documentary structure so we can really get down what those points are. But in the meantime, I need you to be thinking around what new information am I disseminating through this survey documentary? How do these people come into play? And how do I use their interviews to craft the narrative that I need? The next one is a historical documentary. Oh, the historical documentary is so misunderstood because just because something interesting happened in history and because you in particular didn't know about it or you believe that most people don't know about it, doesn't mean that that's a story. That's not a story. That's a subject matter. So I've seen a number of documentaries about Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street is not a story. Black Wall Street is a subject matter. So many things happen. It's a reflection of this country and it's so much entangled with the massacre that happened there. The approach to a lot of documentaries that I've seen about it is generally being like, this thing happened. Can you believe this thing happened? I knew this thing happened. Most people don't know this thing happened. It's not in the history books. Can you believe it? Oh yeah, I can believe it because this is America and that is our way of being. But if you were to take that and decide, okay, what is the new understanding or the new light that I'm shedding on this thing that is not a part of the general zeitgeist, which means because it's in the history book doesn't mean it's not a part of the conversation, right? Within the conversations that are already happening around the subject matter. What new understanding are you bringing to the table? 
So if I were to do a documentary about Black Wall Street, my documentary could be about the education or the miseducation around Black Wall Street. My documentary can be about the rebuilding of Black Wall Street and the institutional factors that created barriers to that. My documentary could be about the dissemination of wealth within the Black community as seen through the eyes of this one family. My documentary could be about one 13-year-old middle school student. Are you 13 in middle school? I don't know. One 13-year-old middle school student who is taking a tour around the country and talking about Black Wall Street. If I wanted to be a historical documentary, looking back doesn't have to be void of the present. How being additive to the conversation could very much be creating a forward going story created by a backward facing context. That's one version of that. However, if I wanted it to be purely historical, all archival, no forward going story, then I would still have to craft a narrative that is compelling and additive, which means it would have to be the marriage between between clear beginning, middle, and end. This is why it's compelling for these main reasons. It has to be cohesive. It should illuminate something different. You should have access to the right experts or to people who express your your unique viewpoint on this historical story. And I really believe that paring down, especially when it comes to historical documentaries, paring down your story, your subject matter to a story, your story to a very clear slice of perspective is key. And what, what, even if you're telling a large story, so if your historical documentary is about this war that happened, okay, so the war happened. Why are you telling this story? I'm telling the story because this war happened and nobody knows about it. Okay, that's not good enough. Somebody knows about it because you know about it. So what about this war is both significant, has contemporary relevance, and that you as a storyteller bring your unique set of things, your view on the world, the place you are in life, your understanding, all of those reasons why it's important to you. Once you figure those things out, then you're in a much better position to tell a story that's fit to go into a canon with the library of other films about the same thing. So for personal documentary, this is also something that sort of goes in and out of vogue for documentary filmmakers, but I think it's sort of making its way back around in a powerful way. For personal documentaries, I think it's really important that, yes, you want to be additive to the conversation around the subject matter of your film, whether it's you dealing with your grandmother's Alzheimer's or you going through an illness or you confronting your long lost father who was never there for you or sort of you going through college and the ups and downs. You want to make sure that what you are looking for, that the audience is going to have the level of intimacy with you to make it worthy to watch you, which is to say you can't be in a personal documentary and not really be emotionally open. And I, of course, that comes over time, but you want to plan for that to happen. You want to plan that time where you have to get used to being on camera and letting your guard down and then making sure that you do give that intimacy, that level of intimacy to your audience or access to you emotionally. What is to be revealed over time is always going to be some version of your humanity. So that's what you're building, right? You're looking for a universal theme to emerge over the course of your project. And you're looking to be surprising to yourself, which is so hard because you're directing the documentary, you're in the documentary. Trust me, I get it. It's it's not an easy thing to do, but you have to be able to step outside of yourself as you're developing your film and, and look at your narrative. Look at your structure and say, okay, I'm shooting from this time to this time. I'm shooting from here to perpetuity, but for, you know, for the foreseeable future. And I'm looking for this thing. I'm waiting for this thing to happen, or I'm following myself to the process of this thing. And what I'm hoping to emerge this universal theme, but my own version of it. So I'm being additive to the conversation around family in this particular way. And this is how I know that I've gotten there. And I think what you're really looking to happen is you're looking for the moment where you set out to make this film about this thing. And over the course of the filmmaking process, it has become about this much deeper thing. So the idea in narrative film where you have somebody who has this want, they go after this want and in pursuit of this want, this need is revealed in in order to overcome this obstacle, they have to salvage, overcome this need. 
it's the same thing with a personal documentary. Like that's that's a narrative that you're looking to build. And you may not be able to complete it with a full circle. It may not look like any other sort of three structured film, but you want to get as close to that as possible. And the priority is still to reveal something new or shift or have a new understanding through the process of watching your film as an audience member. So to recap, the first thing I'd like you to do is to take a step back before you start making your documentary. Resist the desire to jump in headfirst. Acknowledge what type of documentary you're making and make sure that you have these priorities set as you go into your film. For a problem or issue doc, we're talking about a new way of understanding. For a verite documentary, we're talking about your themes, your story being revealed over time. For a survey doc, we're talking about access to people who have privileged information. We're talking about revealing new information being a priority. For a personal documentary, we're talking about intimacy being revealed, your own humanity being revealed and surprising yourself. For historical documentary, we're talking about shedding new light on something that happened, having access to people who were there, who have something unique to say, and something that's additive to the conversations already happening around that subject matter. I hope that was clear. I know it was very repetitive, but I want to make sure that you get this and that you don't rush into making your film before you get this. So if you have any questions, definitely hit me up on Facebook. Send me a message through Messenger. You can find us at, if you go to Facebook and look for Story Consulting Services or you go to facebook.com backslash the forward slash. I'm always going to say that. I don't know which slash it is. Story Consulting Services. Then you can just send me a message through our Facebook page if you have any questions about that. And I'll be sure to answer your question, whether I answer it through the podcast or I answer you personally, I'll definitely get back to you. I know it can be confusing. So for Q&A, the question I got this week was, who is my favorite documentarian? And I don't have a favorite documentarian per se, but I can tell you two documentary filmmakers that made two films that I absolutely love. And I'll probably go into detail about the both of them and our updates at some point because I love these films so much and I love the breadth of these filmmakers work so much. One of them is Laura Portress. She made a film called Citizen Four, but she has an entire breadth of like her whole work is around these sort of government institutions and uncovering certain things about them that is not public knowledge. Citizen Four is a perfect example of a the combination of a verite documentary and a problem with issue doc. It's so incredibly well done because it does exactly what I'm talking about in terms of being extremely additive to the conversation around uh, information that the government has, their covert surveillance programs. And it's also verite because it's character driven. There's a character that we're following and watching the process of er Edward Snowden go through revealing the information that he has in the United States government is incredibly, first of all, you watch this thing happen over time. Things are revealed over time. It's a ton of tension and it's just structurally very sound. But the casting, there could not be a better person who is in this film. The story, the beginning, middle, and end is very well put together and compelling. The other filmmaker is a filmmaker called Jesse Moss and his film is called The Overnighters. It is one of the best. And I'm being loud because it's it's such an incredible documentary. It's one of the best, if not the best, verite documentary I have ever seen in my life in the whole history of the world, the time I have been alive. It is such an intimate portrayal of a man's journey. And it's incredibly surprising. It's so additive to the conversation around where the United States is. So essentially, you have a film about this subject matter, which is in North Dakota, there's this town that has all these jobs because of this oil field. And it's a commentary about where we are in America, the status we're in, in our economic state. Okay, so that's what the film is about. What the film is really about is this pastor who is our entry point into the story and how him and his family and his unique way of dealing with it and opening the doors of his church impact the subject matter about this oil field. Okay, so beyond that, what it's really, really about is the personal journey of this man and his relationships with the people who come through there. And I can't tell you what it's really, really, really about because I would give away the film, but it's illuminating in so many ways and it's following all the patterns that we talked about today for a verite documentary. Jesse Moss is a very, 
very, very smart, sensitive person and filmmaker. And all of his films really do speak to the human condition in one way or another. And that's that's why we make films. I've learned a lot from watching him work and listening to him talk. And I would have to say that's why he's one of my favorite filmmakers. So I hope that answers your question. If you have any questions about those documentaries, let me know. I'm going to leave information on both of those films and filmmakers in our show notes. In the show notes, I'm also going to give you an overview of what we talked about today. So be sure to look out for that. Okay, so here is your assignment for this. I want you to look at the type of film that you're making if you're making a documentary and decide which category it fits in, which genre of documentary it fits in, and then decide what new thing is your film adding to the conversation around the subject matter of your movie. All right, that's all I have for this week. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Again, you can send us a message. Just look us up on Facebook, Story Consulting Services, or go to facebook.com slash Story Consulting Services, and then just send us a message through Messenger. That is all I have for today. But until next time, it's been real. Thank you for listening to this episode of Storyteller Therapy and Investing in You. Comment your thoughts or questions down below. Learn more about our labs, services, and support at atlantafilmproject.com. Stick around for the next episode. See you in a few minutes.